Okay, so you have just heard from the chief of police in Gilroy answering questions that too many uh, police chiefs across this country have had to answer after now having a mass shooting in his community. So here's what we know now after hearing the chief. Uh, 15 people hurt, four dead, including the shooter in this mass shooting situation. Uh, we know that that shooter was not uh, a guest at the Gilroy Garlic Festival, but that he had come in uh, by cutting into a fence on the outside using some kind of tool coming through a creek behind the location where the festival was being held. Came in, there was a report of a second suspect, but uh, right now those are just reports, nothing confirmed. Uh, not sure what role that second suspect played either. Uh, dozens of law enforcement officers from two different counties helping out in the response. This started at about 541 as we show you now more images of people in the mass panic as a shooter opened fire again uh, killing three people injuring 15. Joe. Yeah, we've got a couple of new details that we're going to get into in a minute, but want to set the scene here in Gilroy with this vigil that's happening. You know, this is a rural community. If you talk to people here, they will certainly say it's a small town type of field, one of those places where everybody kind of knows everybody. This vigil uh, to pray for the three people who were killed and the dozen people who are still recovering now uh, set to begin in about a half hour, but we got here a half hour ago, and since then it has really just ballooned. I and mean, you can see just by the sheer amount of people that have come and that have shown up, uh, what kind of support uh, they have for this entire community. Yeah, Eric, within the last half hour, that uh, news conference wrapped up. So we didn't get too many new details, but what we did get uh, was really important context about not only the shooting, but the security that was at uh, place at the festival when that shooting happened. So we're going to get to that in a minute. I do want to start with just a couple of new details that we did get coming out of this press conference, uh, and that is about two warrants primarily. One search warrant that was issued for a car that they uh, police believe belonged to the suspect, uh, Santino Lagan. Continuing to follow our breaking news right now, a female Sacramento police officer has been shot in North Sacramento, and we want to stress that she was shot with a rifle. This was an active shooter situation. She was shot around 610, and it wasn't until about 45 minutes later or so that her fellow officers were finally able to go and get her. So her injuries right now are serious, but as you can imagine, because of that rifle shot, uh, certainly a dire situation. Active shooter there. I want to take you to another scene right now. This is uh, UC Davis Medical Center. This is where sources have told us that wounded officer was taken to. So uh, what you're looking at right now, just the outside of the hospital, we know there are a number of law enforcement agencies that are there right now. We saw the chaplain car there uh, earlier tonight as well. So you don't agree with the policy coming from, from the White House, the strategy? I do not. Let's hypothetically say this week, we see another aggressive step from Iran. What does a proportional response from the United States look like at that point? First and foremost, we have the right to... Let's just start with your analysis of the likelihood that we end up in an armed conflict with Iran. We came very, very close. I think no matter where you stand politically, you got to concede that was a pretty measured response, right? Well, pulling back was certainly the right thing. How in the loop, though, are you, again, as a member of the Armed Services Committee? Is anybody from the White House, are there any liaisons coming to you guys in Congress, certain committees, and saying, this is what we want to do, this is our long-term strategy, this is how we're going to respond to uh, option A if, you know, option B doesn't happen? You're halfway there. You were on the Judiciary Committee, so you got a chance to ask Robert Mueller questions directly. I'm curious what you thought of his performance overall. Article 1 instead. We know that part of the Russian government's effort to interfere in our election was a big social media campaign. Well, we know that because that's what the Mueller report tells us. Are you, because of that, suggesting that there might not be evidence that the Russian government had anything to do with the troll farm and I'm the social media. Mm -hmm. Many of your even re Republican colleagues and some who have been supporters, ardent supporters of President Trump from day one, still acknowledge that there was at least a meddling effort. Well, I, I, so I want to get away from the substance of the report and, and now the reaction to it. Um, and I guess I'm, I'm wondering if you're surprised there are still at this point 101 members of Congress who are after hearing the entire um, testimony are calling for impeachment process to begin. Mm -hmm. 
Are you surprised by that? Oh, not very. Really. And that's a very dangerous thing. You're doubting the credibility of the report. But if you accept the, the Mueller report, there were well, 10 specific instances no, if you accept, where he, he if you lays out evidence of obstruction of justice and uh, no, well, he, he does not. He doesn't he indict. Does, he, he doesn't make a, a charging recommendation. He but can't make he a charging recommendation points. because there's no case to be made.